What's going on guys? I'm doing something that I haven't done in ages. I'm editing an entire series in one go. Normally I try to edit every couple days, but in Nepal I didn't have my laptop with me, so I'm editing literally a thousand plus photos in one go. And because of that, I kind of thought it would be a good time to walk you through my photography workflow. And yes, I know the room is very strangely colored, it's dark time, it's night, I'm trying to get work done. But I want to walk you through my workflow and show you guys how I process my images and kind of like the strategy I take when I'm editing photos and maybe some of the shortcuts I use as well. So I'm going to jump you over to my computer in a second and we're going to do my photography workflow. But before I do so, I have to mention that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson and uh, get yourself a, a new website for your photography portfolio or whatever. We'll talk about Squarespace a little bit more at the very end of this video as well. Over to the computer. So my workflow. In fact, back to the camera. My workflow is all about trying to be productive and organized. Obviously, everybody has their own ways of doing it, everybody has their own style, and everybody has their own ways of being productive. My way might not be the right way, it's definitely not the only way, but it's what I'm comfortable with and it's what I do. Um, let's jump back to the computer. As you can see, I've already got the Nepal images in here. I, I decided to do this video basically after I imported things, but we're going to back up and pretend that didn't happen. The way I do it is I have all my pictures in a specific folder. That's where the images are going to live forever. My raw files go onto a hard drive. They stay on that hard drive until the end of eternity or until I delete them. It's just easier that way and again, that's not always the best way to do it. It's just the way I do it. So you take all the images, you copy all the images. There's 2,096 images and you drag them into the library tag and all you have to do is drag the images and drop them there. Now you get this like import tab and most people kind of just hit import. I don't do that because I think it's faster and better for the future to do a couple other things. So what I do is I go up to file handling here and I do one-to-one -one previews, and this is personal preference. If you want to do minimal, that's fine too. One-to-one -to -one previews are just the best preview files in terms of it doesn't take time to load if you zoom in and out. Basically, it's the biggest preview file you can get. Um, you can also click smart previews if you want. I don't do that. Uh, important down here, what I do is develop settings. I go down to user presets, and then I scroll through my thousands of presets to import preset and basically this is a preset I've created that removes chromatic aberration and does a lens correction so I hit that and then metadata I don't touch and then keywords I type in keywords for the relevant to the trip so let's go Nepal um, there's not some non Annapurna circuit posts in there so I can't do that but let's go travel Asia I don't know I think that's probably it and then when I'm done, I hit import and it will import them all. I have already imported them all. So you can see it doesn't say import because it's impossible because they're already all imported. <laughs> Once they import, they come into Lightroom and I'm in the library, um, the library module. The first process of editing for me is what I call the cull. And the way I cull images is I literally just burn through them and I'm not going to do them all for you because there's, like I said, 2,000 images. But I do this in the library module. You can do this in whatever module you want. But basically, I'm just burning the images that are obviously bad. So here I accidentally took a photo of my foot. <laughs> the first image I took in Nepal is an accidental photo of my jeans that are too ripped and I really need to buy new ones but haven't had time to do so, and my foot. So this is obviously a burner image. Now what I do when I'm culling is I hit the cap locks key and then any image I want to burn, I hit X. So I hit X and if we go back, I'll turn off the cap locks key to see what, so you can see what happened. But if I hit X, you can see it says set as rejected. So that image is now rejected. So now if you scroll to the bottom bar, you can see it's like opacity is down, it's grayed out. And that just means it's rejected. It's got a little flag up there as well. 
saying it's rejected. If you change your mind, you can see this is the rejected flag here. If you change your mind and you go, oh, I messed up, you can press U and it'll remove the flag. And we'll get to the reason why I'm doing that this way as we go forward. The reason I hit cap locks is just for efficiency. If the cap locks is on and you hit reject photo, it automatically jumps you to the next file. So I hit reject, it rejects the file and then jumps to the next one. I tend to call pretty hardcore. So I go through really hard. I don't save anything if it's even slightly bad, but what I am looking for is imperfections, uh, really out of focus photos, and just bad photos. And I do this quite quickly. In fact, almost mind numbingly. So uh, basically what I do is I hit X if I don't like it. So I don't like this one, X. I don't like this one, X. I don't like that one, X. That one I'm okay with. So I hit the right key. And then the right key jumps me to the next one without um, rejecting it. You can see down here all of these ones are rejected. That one's still not rejected. Um, I was just basically messing around with these shots early in the trip, so I'm rejecting all of these. Out of focus, maybe not that bad, but not good either. Overexposed. I was just kind of messing around with this street photography stuff. I clipped this guy's foot, so I gotta reject it. This one's out of focus, I gotta reject it. It's getting better, I might play with that. Basically, what I do is I burn through all the images this way. When I'm done, what I do, I remove the cap locks button. Let's imagine that I've already gone through the 2000 images. I hit control backspace. And when you do that, it brings up this window and it says, delete the 22 rejected master photos from the disc or just remove them from Lightroom. So what happens here is you can hit remove. You hit remove, it'll just remove the preview files from your Lightroom library. If you hit delete from disk, it'll delete the raw files from your disk. I don't need a bunch of garbage footage, so I always hit delete disk, and it will literally delete all of those photos. You see now it's just showing the rejected photos. It'll delete them all, now they're no longer in my library, and they're no longer there as well. That's step one, that's called the call. And again, that process itself usually takes a long time. The next step is then editing my photos. So let's pretend my edit starts here. I scroll all the way to the back of my images. So um, let's say after the call there's 200 images. I don't start editing at number one, I start editing at 200. And the reason I do that is because I find that usually your better images are after, like they're later. Usually you perfect it as you go. The first photo is okay and then you make slight progressions to make that photo better and better and better. So it doesn't make sense to edit the first one and then the next one to be better than that and then the third one to be better than that and then the fourth, to be, it doesn't make sense to edit them all when the last one's the best one. So I edit backwards. Let's pretend that this is the last image I shot. So um, basically now I edit this photo and then I go backwards. So we're gonna go into the develop module. It's not a good photo, but, but we're gonna develop it anyway just for, for fun. And you can see, because I imported them this way, it's already got remove chromatic aberration and the lens profile correction set up. So I, I don't edit super hard, as you guys know. I like to breeze through things pretty quick. I always start with a vibrance right away. And I don't know if that's polarized. That's not the polarized one. I want the polarized one. Let's pretend this one. Okay. So yeah, I breeze through them pretty quick. I usually start with the vibrance and then I go in and make light adjustments where I need them. The white balance looks a little bit on the green side. Now it's purple. It was a very, really purple scene, so it's a little bit too much. You know I have my style where I soften everything and then I like to add a little bit of texture. That's kind of what I do. I want this to be a bit moody. I want that red to really stand out. Um, and then I gotta level this off because that horizon looks horrendous back there. And that's the image. Um, yeah, I probably actually need to crop this. It's not a good photo. <laughs> I'm not trying to make a good photo or show you a good photo. I'm trying to show you the process. There's obviously more editing that can be done to this image. But let's now imagine 
that I've now gone through and edited all my photos, what do I do with them? What I tend to do is export them as a, as a group. So I'll go back into the library and then I'll hit the grouping. I'll make the thumbnails smaller. And then all the images are still here, obviously, because I haven't actually culled anything. But what I'll do is, these are all Kathmandu images, and they're all kind of street photography images. So, there's even some monkeys. Wow, I took a lot of photos that first day. So, that's the end of Kathmandu right here. So, I'll highlight them all, and then I'll add the keywords. So, I'll add things like Kathmandu, city, urban, um, capital city, street photo Ooh, street photography stuff like that and then I'll just hit enter and then those are now applied to all the images then I right click and I export them and this is a step a lot of people don't do I do this because of my backup um, setup and then I will export them to a hard drive I don't have which is my JPEG hard drive but let's just imagine it's H and then in that folder, I'll go sub um, subfolder Nepal 2019, and then I rename them. So this is just the Kathmandu images. So I rename my images Kathmandu Nepal um, Brendan Vanson 2019. Or usually I'll put the month in as well. So. I don't know what month it is, October 2019. And then that's my, my name for all of them. That whole section will be named Kathmandu, Nepal, all of that information. File settings, I export as JPEG, color space sRGB, quality 100. The reason I export as X sRGB is because it's easier picked up by more things like cell phones and computers and stuff like that. I can always export in Adobe, Adobe later if I wanted to. I don't resize the photo. I usually make my resolution 300 for this export. I don't touch output sharpening. I don't touch metadata. I don't watermark. I don't do any post-processing. I just hit export. And that's essentially it. The only thing I guess I need to mention is that when I'm editing backwards as well, I'm also doing a second call. So the first call is like really fast to get through all the burner images, the really bad ones. And then the secondary cold narrows it down so that instead of having five very similar images, I only have one or maybe two. I'm guessing from this whole Nepal series, I'll eventually get down to about 100 images. I took over 2,000. A lot of bad images on this trip because I was kind of just amazed by things and snapshotting away, which is totally fine. So I think I'll call it down probably to 100 at the end of it. So 100 photos for like 16 or 17 days. Um, I should also mention, I don't back up my raw files. And this is just, I guess, m partly laziness, partly because I don't have a house. The raw files stay on the hard drives, I hope they don't crash. At some point, I'd like to have a NAS backup system, which is a little bit more safe for the raw files. But at the end of the day, if I have the JPEGs, I'm okay with that. What I do with the JPEGs, is I actually upload them to Amazon Prime. I'm an Amazon Prime member and there's Amazon Photos. You can back up unlimited um, JPEG images. So I have all my JPEGs on Amazon as a backup. And knock on wood, thankfully, I've never lost um, JPEG files from my hard drive, so I still have all of them. And I think, um, I think that's it. The room has gotten very, very green and the focus is off my face. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, the room's gotten very green because it's very dark and there's these weird lights. I should have probably put that Nisi uh, night filter on before filming this. Uh, I'm curious to know what your workflow is, so let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to uh, end, end this video by just thanking Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They are awesome. It, if you're looking for a place to house your photography portfolio, it's really, really easy to do a really professional photography portfolio or a print sales website or something like that over there using one of their templates. I also want to end this video by mentioning that I think this is probably the last Nepal video. So the next series coming up is going to be quickly in uh, back to Europe, I think, actually. So I'll see you guys there. Peace.